Here we're going to talk about breaking hydrolysation down into four stages. These are gentle lifting to establish a cortex cleaving hydrolysation plane, slow injection for free flow, rapid injection for the hydrolysation, pressing down to neutralise the capsule block. And the more work you do with the hydrolysation, the less work you have to do in rotating the nucleus subsequently. So it's nice to go to the other side and repeat stages three and four, belotting the nucleus to make sure that it's free. Let's try to understand each of these four key stages a little better with some schematics. We've got the lens here with a nucleus shown in a denser area in the middle, and the lens capsule with a rexus edge here and here, and the hydrodissection cannula here. Most of us are no longer using what was called hydrodelineation, in which you deliberately inject it into the lens to make the nucleus smaller. This is still used in manual small incision cataract surgery, but not in phacoemulsification. Instead, the aim is just to tease up the anterior capsule before you hydrate the cortex with any fluid injection. We're then ready to commence the slow injection phase of hydrodissection, and the purpose of slow injection is to promote free flow. Why is this important? Well, to make hydrodissection work, you have to have a localised pressure differential between the inside and the outside of the capsular bag. If you have the viscoelastic blocking the entry site around the hydrodissection cannula and you've got a closed space, the pressure throughout that volume will be uniform. The pressure in any static fluid volume that's a closed system will be uniform. And so all you're going to achieve by injecting rapidly ab initio in hydrodissection is raised pressure in the anterior chamber. That's uncomfortable the patient and it doesn't achieve anything. So slow injection, once you've defined your plane, the good sign you've got free flow is when the anterior capsule pops out and you're ready to pulse around the back. Now let's pause for a moment to consider why free flow is so important to the rapid pulse phase of hydrodissection. You've got quasi-lamellar flow coming out of the end of the hydrodissection cannula here, and that's actually going to generate reduced pressure inside the capsule versus outside. And you can understand this if you think about the way an aeroplane wing generates lift. According to the Bernoulli principle, the pressure is lowest where fluid flow is fastest in lamellar flow conditions. However, as you get up to the hydrodissection front, you've got a localised expanding pocket of turbulence. And in turbulent flow conditions, the localised pressure within a fluid system is higher. And a really good example that you'll remember from medical school of this mechanism is post-stenotic dilatation in aortic stenosis. And just as turbulent flow there acts to expand the aorta, the turbulent flow within the capsule at the hydrodissection front here acts to raise the pressure locally and generate the conditions you need for effective hydrodissection with kind of a shock wave of expanding turbulence moving across the back of the lens. And we can see that here in either one or more controlled rapid pulses. Once the hydrodissection front has moved across around the back of the lens, distending the capsule, the lens rises into the rexis and you've got a capsule block situation and you're then ready for stage four, which is to press posteriorly and neutralize the capsule block, bringing the fluid around from the back underneath the anterior capsule to complete the hydrodissection. And you can repeat the rapid pulse and pressing posteriorly, blotting the nucleus backwards and forwards like this to confirm a complete and free hydrodissection. Some surgeons teach rotating the lens with the hydrodissection cannula to confirm that it's free, but that's rather stressful for the zonules. I'm rather against rotating the lens in a soft eye whenever you can avoid it. And I think this balotting maneuver, which we're showing you here, is equally effective in demonstrating the lens is free and completely hydrodissected. And as I said to you at the beginning, the more work you do with the hydrodissection, the less work you do rotating the lens subsequently. So it's nice to go to both sides and repeat this balotting maneuver to make sure that the lens is free. On cannula choice, I'd avoid using anything too narrow gauge, like a 30 gauge Rycroft, for example, 
all you really achieve with that is raising the pressure in the barrel of the syringe. There's too much resistance through the cannula to achieve free flow. And so something greater than 27 gauge, I find a standard lacrimal cannula is very good. There are also proprietary hydrodissection cannulas you can use. Floating and pivoting in your entry sites, very important in anterior segment surgery. Avoid posterior pressure in the rapid pulse phase of injection. Otherwise, you're risking iris prolapse, so think about that. And for maximum control of any instrument in the anterior chamber, always hold it like a pen when you have the opportunity to do so in your dominant hand and do all your injecting with your non-dominant hand. Okay, I hope we've got the message over that there's more to hydrodissection than simply injecting as hard as you can and hoping for the best. Next time, we'll take a look at capsularexis technique.